Hey listeners, it's Paul Andriola here. Why not join our community at Small Cap Discoveries where we offer our members direct access to some of the best microcap investment opportunities available. Our members are getting access to premium microcap financings, research reports, and direct access to management. Sign up today at www.smallcapdiscoveries.com. Hi everyone, welcome to the Small Cap Discoveries conference call. Today on our call, we have CEO Raviel Afsal from Next Hydrogen Solutions. Next Hydrogen trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol NXH. The company is trading at $6 with roughly 23 million shares outstanding or about $137 million market cap. I'd now like to hand it over to Paul Andriola. Hey, thanks a lot, Trevor. Um, yeah, great to have uh, Reveal with us today at Next Hydrogen. Um, an exciting story that uh, we have uh, were first introduced to probably about six months ago. Uh, the company just recently went public, so we're really happy to have Re um, a Reveal here with us to tell us all about uh, the company. Reveal, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Paul and Trevor. Thank you for having us on, uh, uh, on your uh, show. So next hydrogen, uh, TSX is and uh, TSX we listed, NXH is a symbol. The company itself, it is a, I'm just going to get to the next slide. Uh, so our mission statement is to decarbonize transportation sector and industrial sector. And we want to do it using green hydrogen. Uh, initially we are an equipment provider, but overall longer term thinking about the company, we want to be a solutions provider uh, to decarbonize these two massive industries. The company itself, it was founded in 2008 by pioneers in the water electrolysis space. We'll speak more about them. They had been building electrolyzers since 1990s uh, and in 2008 decided to uh, found Next Hydrogen. Uh, as some of your viewers may know, water electrolysis is simply a process where you take electricity to break the water molecule, which is hydrogen and oxygen, uh, 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 H2O into hydrogen and oxygen. And if you can do it with renewable electricity, that hydrogen that is produced, it's called green hydrogen. So water electrolysis is the only way to produce green hydrogen. And what we have is a purpose-built electrolyzer, alkaline electrolyzer that is designed for integration with renewable energy, energy resources with the objective to lower the cost of green hydrogen production. We have been at it, as I mentioned, for about 14 years now and 38 patents. Uh, giving you a background on some of the team members over here, uh, Myself, I used to be an equity research analyst at Canaccord Genuity, before that at Mackey Research, about 10 years covering the sustainability space and you start getting some patent recognition, met the company. Uh, while I was at Canaccord in April 2020, they checked a lot of boxes for me uh, and I was uh, privileged to join them in August of 2020. Uh, one of the key reasons why I wanted to join the company was because of the team that we have. So when you think about Jim Hinatsu and Mike Stemp, our two co-founders, uh, they had been building electrolyzers, as I mentioned, first for Stuart Energy and then for Hydrogenics, which eventually got acquired by Cummins. They're supported by another person, and Matt Fairley, our vice chairman. He was actually the chief technology officer of Stuart Energy. And you'll see a lot of really high quality talent in Canada came from Stuart Energy, including the CEO and CCO of Ballot Power. And I mentioned Hydrogenics acquiring Stuart Energy before eventually getting acquired by Cummins. So very strong pedigree in the water electrolysis space. And they're supported by a world-class team. Our VP engineering comes from Doosan. Uh, our VP manufacturing comes from GE Healthcare, Delphi Automotive, Cessna. Shane Day on the aftermarket service side uh, was again at Stuart Energy and has installed about 60 plus hydrogen systems in Ontario. And we made a small tuck in acquisition to acquire his company so that we can provide full, uh, a full solution to our customers, which includes uh, aftermarket service support. Our board members, as you see over here, uh, two people that I, I mentioned, uh, part of our new board members that joined. Uh, Tony on the right, uh, he uh, was the former CFO of Ballot Power. Susan, uh, president of Schneider Electric Canada. So uh, a very high quality board uh, that we have assembled. Going back to the company's history, the company was founded in 2008. We did our first pilot project with Atomic Energy Canada Limited. This was for a very small market application in the can-do reactors. But the reason why we wanted to do this project was to prove out our high current density operations. This is a key differentiator for us versus our peers. And we'll spend some time talking about in the few, uh, in the next few slides. Very successful project and uh, Atomic Energy Canada Limited publicly spoke about how successful the project was with us. Following that, we won a 0.4 megawatt project with Canadian Tire. 
that was transitioning their forklifts that were previously running on lead acid batteries to hydrogen. Uh, and they used our water electrolysis system to produce the hydrogen to test out these forklifts. Again, a very successful project. Uh, uh, Canadian Tire has publicly commented on the success of this project. Not just that, we secured two orders from them, both about 1.8 megawatt systems. And now that we are well capitalized, we are uh, competitively positioned to scale up our technology to multi-megawatt systems. That's what our current focus is, but that is just the tip of the iceberg. Expect multiple products coming out of Next Hydrogen over the next three years. We are a very IP-rich company, and now we are well capitalized to bring all uh, our portfolio to the market. Uh, summarizing the investment thesis over here, uh, you know, uh, when you think about hydrogen, hydrogen is an excellent energy carrier, and it can be used to decarbonize the heavy mobility space, as well as industrial processes that cannot be electrified and require a gas. So when you think about the addressable market opportunity for us, it's estimated at $80 billion by 2030. And this is just for water electrolysis equipment alone. And there are less than 10, 10 notable players in this market space, which gives us a good competitive positioning to gain uh, a good percentage of this market share. Number two, I talked about the team. They have been building electrolyzers for a very long period of time. And when you've been building electrolyzers since 1990s, you understand intimately what the challenges are and what the areas of improvement are. And that, that's uh, the genesis of Next Hybrid. Uh, and what we saw, the, one of the biggest weaknesses with these alkaline electrolyzers, and by the way, uh, these electrolyzers have been around since 1930s. Uh, and we have seen significant improvements over that time in cell material, cell components. But overall, the cell design architecture was very limited. It was made for steady electric current, low operating points, not really for renewable energy resources, which are a lot more intermittent uh, in, in their nature. So we saw a key challenge with respect to how gases and fluids flow through the electrolysis unit. We revolutionized that design. And as a result of that, we get three distinct advantages. We can pass a lot more current through the system using much less materials compared to our peers, which gives us a cost advantage. Number two, which also adds to the cost advantage, is that we can ramp our systems up and down very quickly to better capture the renewable energy resources. For example, when the sun is shining and when there's cloud cover, you want the system to ramp down. So the system is very uh, has very strong dynamic response to better capture the renewable energy resources. And number three, the design enables us to make these systems very, very big. And as you can make these systems very, very big, you will benefit from economies of scale. So together, current higher current density than your peers, resulting in less material use, uh, dynamic response, meaning better uh, capture of renewable energy resources and inherent scalability leading to economies of scale. Together, that's a very powerful combination to reduce the cost of green hydrogen. And that is uh, that was behind the partnership agreement that you saw with Hyundai uh, and X Hydrogen. Moving on to the fourth point, I uh, mentioned we are very IP rich. We have 38 patents. Uh, we are commercializing a one, two, three megawatt product line right now after our successful pi pilots. And looking ahead, you should expect not just the highest current density alkaline electrolyzers, but also some of the biggest alkaline electrolyzers coming out of Next Hydrogen. So it's a very exciting journey for us over the next three, four years as we roll out these new product offerings into the marketplace. Uh, finally, uh, very pleased and privileged to be listed on TSX Venture Exchange. To our knowledge, we are the only pure play water electrolysis company listed in North America and providing uh, investors with exposure to a high quality team uh, with a very unique product that meets a well-defined market need and a very large addressable market, a very large addressable market opportunity. So where can green hydrogen be used? So there are two big market opportunities for us. One is the large scale green hydrogen market. Here you should think about renewable energy farms that are directly tied to electrolyzers, producing large quantities of green hydrogen that is then transported over to customers in a regional hub and spoke model. And these customers will be on the heavy mobility side, but also industrial customers that require a gas, as I mentioned, like ammonia, cement, steel, electric furnaces just cannot burn hot enough. So you still need a gas. And if you can't use natural gas, what are you going to do? How are you going to decarbonize those industries? And the most visible path seems to be hydrogen. Number two is the smaller on-site market. Here you have electrolyzers that are behind the customer's fence, typically tied to the grid, producing hydrogen on-site, and then it's used to power captive fleets. Like you can have forklifts that are running on hydrogen or heavy mobility fleets running on hydrogen. And that's where that market moves. And the on-site market is frankly that move first. And we got the best customer that we could hope for in Canada in that space in the form of Canadian Tire pointed out 
that we did a 0.4 megawatt project with them. And on the back of that, we secured two projects, both 1.8 megawatts. The first system is going to the Bolton Ontario distribution center that you see on the right. It's going to produce about 600 kilograms of hydrogen per day. That's sufficient to power about 200 forklifts twice a day. And just to put this in perspective, to our knowledge, this is going to be one of the biggest uh, on-site project for materials handling in materials handling application for, for hydrogen production. So it's a very notable project and um, I think it's going to draw a lot of attention to us. Uh, moving on, what we want to do uh, over the next the course of the next one year is announce strong strategic partnerships that can either help us scale up, uh, be our go-to market partners, or bring a very large end market to us. Uh, and that's what we found in uh, Hyundai and Kia partnership. Uh, they diligenced us for a good period of time. And on the back of that, we secured this partnership arrangement. And what this really entails initially is our IP, their supply chain. And together we built uh, an electrolyzer unit, a proof of concept electrolyzer for them, which will be delivered to South Korea in Q222. And concurrently, we are uh, engaging in commercial discussions. This is the uh, this is the unit that uh, our customers receive. You have the electrolyzer over here. Then uh, with the full balance of plant, it will come in ISO containers, plug and play system with the electrolyzer, water purification, uh, a transformer, hydrogen, nitrogen, skid, oxygen squids uh, for our customers. So this is what's unique about us. So maybe if I just step back over here, when you think about an electrolyzer, this is our electrolyzer as you can see. So typically, what happens? happened in the old conventional um, alkaline electrolyzer design was all the hydrogen, when hydrogen and oxygen are produced in the electrolysis unit, they go through the small pipes in the electrolyzer to external gas liquid separators. Why liquid? Because when you're pulling the hydrogen and oxygen through the system, it also entrains the liquid, the electrolyte with it. And so the hydrogen, oxygen, and then the electrolyte is separated outside this electrolyzer in typical design. So they have external gas liquid separators, which separate the gases and then the liquid, and then the liquid is sent the length of the electrolyzer back and to replenish the cells so that the reaction can keep happening. What's different about us is we are separating those gases and liquids inside the electrolyzer, not just inside the electrolyzer, but on a cellular level. So that what that allows us to do is uh, uh, results in the key benefits for us. For example, with a traditional design, if you pass too much current through it, because of these small manifolds that you have inside, you can start getting choke points, which limits the amount of current you can pass through it. Uh, you can also start getting uneven gas liquid composition inside the electro electrolyzer, which is dangerous. So those, th because of the way fuels and gases flow in that conventional design, you can, it's difficult to pass too much current through it. It's difficult to scale it up and it's not very responsive to variation in up, uh, in incoming current. But because of how we manage fluid and gases internally and in a decentralized fashion, that leads to these three key benefits that we have. One is our high current density. So our design enables about one amp per centimeter square in terms of the current dens density. Typical alkaline electrolyzers are in the 400 to 500 milliamps per centimeter square. So what that current density really means is, you know, you're producing more hydrogen using less materials. And if you can produce two times more hydrogen compared to your peers using less materials, you have a cost advantage. That's one. Number two, we talked about the dynamic response that we can ramp up and down at about 5% per second. A typical alkaline system can be up to 5% per minute. So this is a significant improvement over the conventional design, and that allows us to better capture the renewable energy resources. And by the way, what... Uh, uh, one of the key reasons why there's two different types of electrolyzers. One are alkaline, the other one are PEM. PEM is a lot more expensive, uh, less durable. Alkaline is a lot cheaper, uh, a, a longer life. But the problem with alkaline in the conventional design is it's not very dynamic. Uh, it doesn't ramp up and down very quickly. With our unique design changes, we are giving you this, we are bringing you close to the performance of PEM using much more cheaper, durable alkaline cells. And the final thing that I pointed out was inherent scalability leading to economies of scale. And just to put this in perspective, um, our two megawatt system that we're designing right now versus our six megawatt system. Our six megawatt system is three times more output. Yet when we think about the footprint, it's roughly the same. So that's what shows you the economies of scale that we can benefit. So together, 
current density dynamic response inherent scalability very powerful combination to reduce the cost of green hydrogen at scale our patent portfolio uh i'll just spend two minutes on this just one key point i'd make over here look at our 2008 patent connection of water electrolyzers to wind farms so this goes back to the point that i made early on that we were always focused on revolutionizing the electrolyzers so that they better integrate with renewable energy resources so this is not something new i know green hydrogen has become a buzzword right now but we were fortunately focused on this market from the get-go which is why we are well positioned to meet this very large and well-defined market need now so what's causing all the excitement about green hydrogen as i mentioned in some sectors it's very hard to abate carbon emissions and green hydrogen can be used in those sectors think heavy mobility think industrial processes that require a gas uh, number two is that the economics of green hydrogen, hydrogen look very promising. So 80% of the cost of green hydrogen is renewable energy prices, and you know the, the curve it's on. And number two uh, is the electrolysis capex, which is down about 50% uh, over the last five years. And we believe enabled by the design changes that we are bringing into the marketplace and what other players in the market play, uh, place are bringing into this marketplace, we can reduce the cost of electrolysis as well. So together, reducing electricity pricing, reducing cost of electrolysis uh, positions us to get to about $2 per kilogram uh, by 2030. And if you can do that, you're going to be essentially at parity with diesel. And that's a very big statement. So if you can get green hydrogen at parity with diesel, just think about the addressable market opportunity for you. And uh, industry experts expect that by about uh, 2050, you should have about one quarter of all energy consumption be dependent on green hydrogen. And as I mentioned, the only way to do green, uh, produce green hydrogen is through electrolysis, and there are less than 10 notable players in the marketplace at this time. And this is already happening. You know, some people might be wondering, hey, when will, will this market start growing? Uh, these are some of the mandates around the world for green hydrogen. And if you add them up, it points to about 100 gigawatts of electrolysis, water electrolysis capacity to be installed by 2030. And it's happening now. And what that implies, 100 gigawatts of electrolysis capacity by 2030 implies about 80 billion U US market share, uh, a market opportunity. And that is just, the, as you can see, just the beginning. This is not a five-year play. This is not a 10-year play. This is a multi-decade play, as you can see what happens 2030 to 2050 based on these expectations. And then the other thing to consider is when you think about this curve over here, electrolysis is only about 15% of the market opportunity by 2050. Still very significant, 1.8 trillion. But think about the ancillary revenue stream around that that you can build as a company. Speaking about competitive positioning, uh, the, so let me back up a little bit. So electrolysis, as I pointed out, takes electricity to break the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen. What a fuel cell does is then takes that hydrogen and converts into electricity. So there are many, many fuel cell companies, as you can see over here, including some very notable ones like Ballot Power. Now, all of these companies need hydrogen at the end of the day. And hydrogen is produced by water electrolysis companies, green hydrogen is. And you can see there are very few notable players in the electrolysis space at this time which allows us uh, this uh, unique uh, competitive advantage to gain significant uh, market share. Uh, finally, uh, uh, longer term thinking about the company, uh, we are targeting about 20% EBITDA margins, about 35% gross margins for the business. Where we are right now, our focus right now is getting our manufacturing facility up and running. Uh, uh, we just took possession of the facility and are getting it ready in Q4. Uh, it should be able to do about 20 megawatts on one shift, and hopefully we can run up to three shifts at that facility. So, so that's good. Uh, we announced uh, one strategic partnership with Hyundai Kia. We want to announce more uh, over the next 12 months to show multiple pathways of commercialization for next hydrogen. Uh, and then eventually over the long term, as we trans the, the runway for us on equipment sales alone is so substantial at this time. So that's what the focus is. But longer term, we also want to see how we get into the infrastructure game uh, on the build, own, and operate, or take minority interest positions into uh, hydrogen generation projects longer, longer term. So just summing up uh, the thesis, very large market opportunity, and we are very competitively positioned in this marketplace. We are experts in water electrolysis. And not only are we experts in conventional uh, electrolysis, we have come up with a unique design that meets a well-defined market need to produce green hydrogen at low cost. 
uh, very extensive IP portfolio resulting in multiple products coming out. So a lot of excitement uh, over the next three years. Uh, and in terms of milestones, we discussed them briefly in terms of strategic partnerships and getting demonstrations out there in 2022. So come 2023, we are ready for large volume commercial sales. Thank you, Paul. Excellent. Uh, thanks so much, Reveal. Um, I got some questions right off the top of my head, um, and hopefully I didn't miss them in the presentation. But um, so you're building these units out. Can, can you give us a sense of what your um, like what, what's the model as far as what these things might cost and what the ongoing, if any, revenue you see from these units as they're as they're produced? Sure, Paul. Do you want me to stop sharing my screen? Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So um, right now, uh, we don't publicly, uh, uh, I can tell you what the market pricing is right now and where we eventually want to get to. Uh, the market pricing right now is about US 1 million per megawatt, roughly speaking. Uh, uh, but it varies depending on the size of the system. Uh, smaller systems are more expensive, bigger systems are less expensive. Uh, and where we hope to get to by 2025 is around $300 per kilowatt. Uh, you know, somewhere between, uh, it should certainly be below 500 and our target is around $300 per kilowatt uh, where we want to get to. And if, just to put that in perspective, if you're thinking about $300 per kilowatt and about two, three cents electricity pricing, then your levelized cost of hydrogen is going to be in the two to $3 per kilogram range. And if you can get to two to $3 per kilogram for green hydrogen, then that starts approaching parity with diesel as we know of today. I don't even know if it's going to be a good benchmark uh, for the next 10 years. Right, exactly. Um, okay, well, that's interesting. Um, and then, uh, you know, really, you mentioned some potential customers in the ballards of the world and some of the customers that, that produce or require hydrogen, but who, give us a better sense of who your real customers are, like who is going to be buying, um, you know, the, this type of hydrogen, this green hydrogen that, that, uh, that likely a lot of people are going to need. Yes. So the biggest pull we are getting right now on the business development side is from transportation companies. So think OEMs and the transportation space, similar to Hyundai, uh, but more diversified in uh, different areas uh, could be uh, in different transportation verticals. Uh, so we're getting a lot of pull from them. And one of the reasons why you're seeing that is you may have seen there was a proposal in Europe to ban all fossil fuel vehicles you know, by 2035. There's similar proposals coming all over the place. And so as a result, OEMs are very concerned about their combustion engines and they want to move into a more, use a more decarbonized fuel. So very strong pull from the transportation space. This is the beginning. Then comes the industrial space. So think about ammonia, com the companies that produce ammonia, cement, fertilizer, because the problem is they are some of the heaviest carbon emitting industries in the world. And unfortunately they cannot electrify the operations because electric furnaces, as I pointed out, just cannot burn hot enough. And in some cases they already use hydrogen. So, you know, it's a easy switch for them uh, to start blending in a uh, five, 10% green hydrogen to begin to start decarbonizing their operations as it's, it's an existential risk for them. So I think that's where it starts. Uh, and then it continues to go into utilities. Think about renewable energy companies that uh, where the electron prices are declining and they can use the cheap electron prices to produce much higher value green hydrogen. Uh, mm -hmm. Natural gas companies, because they're worried about stranded assets over time. Uh, you know, uh, they need to put green content into those pipelines. Uh, electric, the, otherwise the electrification team is just going to keep pounding away at that market share that they have. So uh, it's a very long runway. Starts with transportation, moves into industrial, then think about renewable energy partnering with us and uh, utilities eventually. So clearly a lot of applications, a lot of uh, end customers at, uh, at the end there. Um, okay, so you just went public. Uh, you, you, know, you clearly uh, raised some money on your go public uh, um, uh, or process. Um, how much money did you raise? And uh, tell us what your balance sheet looks like right now. Yes, so we raised about $55.5 million on the last raise that we did. Over the last 12 months, we've raised about $64 million. Uh, we have about $46 million of cash on the balance sheet right now, no debt. Uh, this is after paying down about $5 million of debt that we had uh, in the company. Uh, that's where we said, I think your next natural question will be, how much time does it buy me? Uh, yep. So depending on how hard we want to run, we think it's going to be between two to four years what my absolute minimum amount of spend on an annualized basis is about $8 million, $8 million. So you can see how I can get 
to over four years. So two to four years is how I think about it, but it's ample capital for me to commercialize all my IP portfolio as, as, uh, as we look at it today. Mm -hmm. and, and outside of sort of your, the operations side of the business, do you see any other strategic moves that you can make that, um, that would require capital? Are, are there M&A opportunities? Are there other ventures that you can conceivably could go after? I think uh, the opportunities are great, but we also have, uh, we want to stay focused at this mm -hmm. time, get a manufacturing uh, uh, equipment sale business up and running. But we did make a small tuck in acquisition of a company called Clean Fuel Systems. And so that reminds me, so you talked about what's your ongoing revenue stream. So my ongoing revenue stream used to be about 4% of my equipment sales. And that was basically aftermarket service support for the electrolyzer and then the balance of plant. And so with the small acquisition that we made, uh, this company, Clean Fuel Systems, used to provide aftermarket service support for compressors, storage dispensers. And that is frankly a lot more valuable than the service uh, for, uh, scope that we had previously. Uh, and also very strategic because customers want a solution. So um, I think there are opportunities to for m and uh, in terms of uh, aftermarket service business to grow that business through tuck-in acquisitions. But then as you look out further out, I think there can be significant opportunities on the build, own and operate side. But we are not an infrastructure company right now. If we start try to get into the infrastructure business right now, which is not our DNA, there are many risks that we face. So you want to gradually enter that marketplace and probably enter that through minority uh, interest in projects where the execution risk lies with someone else and you're getting my minority interest for in-kind payment for the uh, for the equipment that you provide. And so that's how we, we are thinking about the business. Okay, so um, again, you just went public, you raised $55 million. Um, how much how much is owned by insiders or key people associated with the company? It's about 23%, uh, so very sizable position. And uh, what, what's the makeup sort of of the rest of the shareholdings? Is there institutional interest? Um, is it mostly retail? What can you tell us of the other shareholders? Um, so the last round that we did, $55.5 million, that was almost almost fully taken up by four large uh, institutions. Two were strategic, uh, potentially strategic partners for us, uh, and two were well-known uh, uh, funds. Uh, so maybe Neil, if you want to add some more color to that. Yeah, we're about 40% institutional, um, and the rest is, uh, is retail and high net worth. Gotcha. And um, I mean, you're, you're a Canadian listed company with, with sort of grand, you know, grand ideas here. Um, give, give us geographically, where's the interest coming from? Is it, is it, are we getting a lot of interest from US investors? Is it European? What can you tell us sort of about the, uh, the nature of the, the, the interest right now? Uh, I mean, the interest is very global uh, in scale right now. And right now we are looking at to stay as close to home as we can, because we are bringing our first systems to the marketplace, which requires some, uh, a, a, a lot of care, right? So yeah, you want to be close to those systems so you can monitor them. But frankly speaking, the, uh, the two markets that are, I mean, really all markets are taking off. China is doing really well in that space. Europe, of course, was always doing really well in there. Australia is coming alive uh, uh, at this time. India is coming alive at this time. America, Canada have been laggards, so to speak, but you are seeing with the infrastructure bill coming soon in the US, uh, you will start to see a lot more excitement about the hydrogen space over here too. So uh, in terms of the five projects that we are looking at, uh, uh, looking at for next year, uh, we're targeting three in North America and two abroad. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to remind everybody that's listening, if you've got any questions you'd like me to ask, reveal, please uh, feel free to use the chat function. Type in your question there. I'll do my best to, to ask the question. Um, reveal, um, what, what do you see as your biggest challenges right now to, to execute your business plan? Um, we are growing super quickly right now, and we need to get the right people in the right seats and have them integrated into the organization. So that's been our key focus. Uh, we have grown to about 35 people now. Uh, we were less than uh, eight people going into the year. So bringing our whole team together and making sure that, uh, uh, you know, uh, the product development process does not get impacted and people can get onboarded very quickly. That, that is probably something that is very important at this stage for us. Uh, I think we are doing super well on that because the type of people that we have gotten on and what we saw are 
the first we onboarded our manufacturing team, which went really, really well for us. Uh, and then we got our aftermarket service team, which actually came from uh, the main guy came from Stuart Energy. So, you know, integration was again very quick. And now we're integrating our engineering team into this, uh, into the equation. So I think that is one thing that we have to be careful about. The second thing that we have to be careful about is uh, making sure that we are focused on the right opportunities because the green hydrogen market is just coming alive. There are many different applications that people talk about where it can go. So just staying focused on the opportunities that we think are going to result in the highest ROE for the company longer term. And um, as investors, what what sort of metrics or catalysts should uh, should investors be watching out for to really understand if you're executing your business plan? At the end of the day, what investors need to determine is whether we can be a global player uh, 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 and uh, provide solutions uh, at scale. How they can uh, determine that is by the strategic partnerships that we form and announce. Uh, number two, by the demonstrations that we can have next year up and running to showcase our unique technology. So uh, as an investor myself too, or uh, as a shareholder of the company, I think as long as we can announce multi uh, blue chip strategic partnerships, which are actually deep with a lot of substance in them, because that's our focus. We don't want to be a promotional company. We want to announce partnerships where we think there's something very, very real over there, uh, like what we see with Hyundai and Kia. So partnerships, Number two, demonstrations. Uh, and there's a lot happening behind the scenes that people won't see. Like we just uh, implemented our ERP system. Uh, we are uh, moving into a manufacturing facility. So all the things that are required to build a strong foundation are already underway and we're executing very well on them. Um, I've got a question here in the chat um, and it's regarding uh, ZBEX August 12th conference call, um, ZBEX said that green hydrogen from electroly uh, electrolyzers is four to six times more expensive than hydrogen from RNG or natural gas. Can you, can you please comment on that? Yes, yeah, so, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a very good question. So the price of, so RNG is a difficult one for me to answer um, because, so let's talk about what's known. So gray hydrogen, the way it's produced right now is basically taking natural gas uh, and uh, steam to produce hydrogen and carbon emissions. So the way it works is uh, uh, you will, for every kilogram of hydrogen that you produce, you'll produce about 12 kilograms of carbon emissions. Now, if instead of natural gas, you use renewable natural gas, you'll have, of course, less carbon emissions. But the price of renewable natural gas versus the price of natural gas I mean, there's a, almost a 4x, in, in some cases, 5x difference between the price, price of RNG uh, versus natural gas. So something to consider. Anyways, the price of gray hydrogen, let's take renewable natural gas out of the equation, is about $2 per kilogram. The answer is absolutely right from uh, ZBEC. Uh, the price of green hydrogen today, if you're zooming about 1 million per megawatt and 8 cents per kilowatt electricity pricing, the price of green hydrogen will be in the 8 to 10 dollars per uh, dollars uh, dollars per kilogram range absolutely correct now but think about what happens to the with the on the customer side so you have to take that gray hydrogen forget about the carbon emissions for a minute you have to if you have to transport it to a customer in some cases the overall cost of the customer can go as much as 14 dollars per kilogram why because first you have to liquefy it then you have to purify it then you have to transport it then you have to store it in a cryogenic tank then you have to vaporize it and then you have to dispense it so you think about all the steps they all add incremental costs and with green hydrogen you don't have that supply chain complexity because it can be generated on site the next point to make over here is yes the price of gray hydrogen right now assuming it's used on right where it's produced is four times cheaper than green hydrogen but what's happening to green hydrogen going forward well, I mentioned renewable electricity pricing, which is 80% of our cost, is going to four cents per kilowatt hour based on the new solar contracts that we are seeing in the marketplace, and then the abundance of surplus energy. So if your 80% of your cost is coming down nicely for you, where do you go? And we think green hydrogen can be at the price of gray hydrogen, which is about $2 per kilogram uh, by 2030. And that, that, that's not my target. The, those are the industry targets. Department of Energy is even targeting lower than that, the U.S. Department of Energy. So that's how we think about it. And ZBEC has very publicly said um, that uh, they think hydrogen has a, a very strong long-term play. Uh, 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 so, so that's their viewpoint. 
Fair enough. So um, let, let, let's look out in the future. Uh, assuming you, you execute your business plan, where do you see the business in five years? We have not provided revenue guidance uh, at this time. Uh, so I'll, I'll have to stay away from that. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, we want to be in large volume commercial sales by that time, uh, well before that. Uh, and so if you think the market opportunity is going to be about US $6.9 billion by 2025, there are less than 10 notable players in the marketplace. Give me uh, uh, some top-down analysis. You can come up with some percentage, one, even 1%, one you get to about 69 million, right? So, so you have to think about, you have to think about what, what percentage of the market you want to give me. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm going to take another question from uh, from the audience here, and it's a bit of a long one, but uh, okay, hydrogen is difficult to ship or store due to a higher pressure, extremely low temperature to produce a liquid. H2M in Vancouver claims their proprietary nanomaterial holds twice the volume of hydrogen at half the cost. Have you talked to them? Um, I have not talked to them yet. Uh, now, uh, but uh, most likely my technology development team has because we keep a very close track and uh, relationships with up and coming technologies. Uh, but we, we typically would like to get involved with companies after a pilot scale has already been uh, done. Mm -hmm. um, what, um, you know, again, looking forward and not too forward, what, what sort of catalysts can investors look out for here, say in the next six to 12 months uh, for the company? I think uh, announcement of demonstration projects uh, uh, and announcement of strategic partnerships and in the best case scenario, both can be tied together. Mm -hmm. Because that's what you really want. I mean, the big question that you should have for me is in the market opportunity is so humongous. How can you alone tackle it? And if I say I'm going to tackle it alone, you should be worried. But if I say I'm going to collaborate with strong partners to execute on this uh, large market opportunity for us and we can demonstrate that, then that shows uh, what our long-term growth projections can look like. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, one thing I'll say is that um, I'm very impressed with, with the board and some of the people you've already brought to the table that come from significantly large players in the space or somebody who has sort of, uh, you know, been successful in the industry already. So I think somewhat that validates, um, you know, the opportunity. And yeah, I, I agree with you. I think, um, you know, clearly energy is a massively large business how you tackle that and how you bring sort of a new technology into that is going to require a lot of players, not just yourself. So I, I'm, I commend you uh, on, on at least the team that you've built right now and, and what you've done so far to sort of find, you know, some, some partners uh, to break down that, that industry for you. Um, I mean, we're, we're sort of at the end here of my questions. And what, what we always like to do is give you guys an opportunity to sort of leave a parting message or a key takeaway that you want investors to, to leave with today. What, what would that be reveal? I think, you know, what I keep saying to our team over here is that we are chasing higher intentions. It goes bigger than ourselves. We need to decarbonize our planet. We need to do it fast. We are trying to do our very best to decarbonize our planet. And we are looking to collaborate with other players who want to do who are similar, uh, who, are, who are of similar mind with us. And we think the runway is huge. The team is there, the foundation is set. Now we are ready to go and uh, show what we can do. That's fantastic. Um, Reveal, if somebody wants more information, what's, uh, how can they get it? And uh, what's your website address? Uh, yes, so www.nexthydrogen.com. Uh, my personal email address is R and then my last name of Zal, A-F-Z-A-A-L at nexthydrogen.com. Fantastic. Okay, so we've been speaking to Reveal Afzal uh, of Next Hydrogen Solutions, NXH, on the Venture Exchange. Um, I certainly want to thank you for joining us today. And I, I suggest if anybody's got any questions, either please visit their website or contact Reveal directly. Um, again, thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to catching up uh, in the near future. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you.